Our next piece of news comes from Silicon Era, where they say Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy may be coming to PC and Nintendo Switch. No word for Xbox Live, but the details say a licensing manager in an interview for licensing Sourcebook Europe. I it's an odd name. Um, mm -hmm. Very literal, I guess. Yeah. May have accidentally revealed that Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy is coming to PC and Nintendo Switch, as well as a new game coming in 2019. Thanks, Eurogamer. Eurogamer, obviously known for leaking lots of stuff, uh, most of which comes out to be true. Some don't, so who knows if this will. But it continues, according to the manager, the game was a huge success at retail with no marketing spend, and will be going to Nintendo Switch and PC in 2018. There will also be a new game coming in 2019, and this is all part of Activision's five-year plan for the franchise. The manager works for GBI, a retailer working closely with Activision for Europe region Crash Bandicoot merchandise. He says that GBI is delighted to be fully on board for all products Crash Bandicoot related. The source of the statement shown in the image has since been edited to remove said statement. So this could be a thing to where they removed it because it wasn't true, or it could be something, um, I remember there was, well, actually, there's just a lot of uh, interviews. One, for example, uh, Game Game Explain had an interview before the Nintendo Switch came out with one of the people who was in the Nintendo Switch commercial. Um, so that first trailer that they released, where everyone's playing like the eSport arena uh, Splatoon thing yeah so he was one of the people in that and he was talking about how whenever everyone's like drawing the plans on the piece of paper or the marker board whatever it was uh they just like after a while they just started drawing bad stuff i don't i don't know if i'm allowed to say it's a pg stream but they essentially yeah. started drawing uh breasts and other male parts on the boards and they said in some of the commercials if you look at it you can see some of the stuff that they were drawing because they were in the room just drawing around for like six hours while they filmed everything and had everything set up so he was talking about that and some of the other stuff like whenever they were on the nintendo switch there was nothing actually on the screens it was actually added in post-processing so you see them playing the games but they're not really playing anything and then nintendo contacted uh game explain to remove the podcast so it could be something like that to where it was either right. stuff that wasn't factual so they removed it because they didn't want to be looked at as a not credible source or it could be something to where it was true but activision doesn't want anyone to know so they told them to right. remove it but it is yeah. interesting that it wasn't mentioned for xbox just pc and nintendo switch so i don't know if there's something there with playstation to where they don't want it like it was in the contract for it to not go to xbox because that's the biggest competitor mm -hmm. uh like street mm -hmm. fighter 5 for instance uh, i think playstation helped fund that game somewhat so it came to pc and playstation 4 but it didn't come to xbox one mm -hmm. so there could be some weird uh partnership that they have there uh but yeah what's what's uh, your guys thoughts on this PlayStation hates xbox <laughs> yeah they, they just do they they like don't want cross play with like rocket league or minecraft and they aren't gonna yeah i don't know like all their press statements whenever xbox is mentioned they just they don't have anything very good to say so the, the two it seems like nintendo is kind of everybody's buddy <laughs> this this console generation like I feel like now, before, you know, they, now, were the, yeah, they were before, the poor punching bag, the poor kid they beat up in yeah. the school playground, and now they're like, oh, now we kind of want to be friends. Yeah, like both, like Microsoft especially, kind of, uh, I, they kind of, they, they got it on for Nintendo, they, they, <laughs> they really, they really want to, I think they want to acquire Nintendo, to be completely honest, well, but oh, they really, no. I don't think, it, it's not going to happen, the but thing you know, is, I think that's what they want. They but. don't look at Nintendo, sorry to interrupt you, but this is really quick, they, mm -hmm. I, before I didn't think they really looked at Nintendo as a competitor, because if mm -hmm. someone, like if a third party releases a game before 
it either wouldn't even come to the Wii U, or if it did come to the Wii U, nobody would really buy it. That's why mm -hmm. a lot of third parties completely cut off third party support. Like games like Zombie U or uh, Rayman yeah. Legends were originally yeah. Wii U exclusives, and then they ended up coming out on PlayStation because they didn't sell right. enough uh, to keep yeah. their yeah. deal in place with Nintendo. And then they just stopped making exclusives and they stopped releasing third party games entirely on the Wii U. So now with mm -hmm. the Nintendo Switch, um, Everyone wants to jump on the bandwagon. Yeah, like oh, yeah. before it was, if a game, like, obviously there's no Call of Duty game right now on the Switch, but I think Sony and Xbox looked at it as, well, if someone releases a game on Nintendo Switch and PlayStation, everyone's going to buy it on PlayStation, no one's going to really buy it on the Switch, we have more stuff. Uh, there's not mm -hmm. as many Switches out there, and then no one really buys third-party Nintendo games anyways. But, as we talked about earlier, Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2, in the short time that it's been out, has already outsold yeah. the number of units that were on yeah. PlayStation 4. So now, like maybe when this statement was made, or whenever this deal was put in, Sony may have not seen Nintendo as... It's like, oh yeah, Crash Bandicoot, that can release on the Switch. Who's gonna buy it? Everybody already owns it on the PlayStation 4, who wants to buy it anyways? It's in 4K, mm -hmm. why would they be interested? But then with games like Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2, where it has all of, like, it's it was already out on PC, mm -hmm. on PlayStation, on Xbox, why would someone rebuy it for uh, the Nintendo Switch? Everyone who wants to play it should have already played it. But then it outsells all of the copies that were on PlayStation 4. So now it's yep. the same thing to where it's before, I would have probably said who, like anyone who wants to play Crash Bandicoot would have likely already played it on the PlayStation 4. They had the fur K to where like it plays in 4K, everything's remade, it looks amazing. So why would someone pick like the worse, and I say that in quotes, experience on the Switch to where you're just gonna get a standard version of it? But if we look at other third-party games, then if it releases on the Switch, it I think it could also... Because mm -hmm. I think the Switch is perfect for platformers and stuff, which is what Crash Bandicoot is. So, yeah. Pretty much anything on Switch is about sells at this point. <laughs> yeah. like, like, Nintendo could put out... Like, you could pre-order a bag of dog poop, and then people will buy it because Nintendo has the logo on the bag. Like I mean, Nintendo say, could, could make cardboard! Yep, yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, that's exactly. true. And you know what? I would buy it too. That's the thing. <laughs> I'm guilty of this. Is that I'm I'm gonna go out and buy that Nintendo brand cardboard for eighty dollars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it's not the cardboard you know, that you're. I think it's seventy dollars. No, but... Software and everything. Yeah. Oh, it's maybe seventy dollars for you, Ashley. But in Canada, oh, everything I costs perfect. us more money. Well, it's <laughs> not I think, I think Canada. I no, I think the real bots at eighty on Amazon. <laughs> So I don't oh think yeah. yeah, no, but yeah. seriously, everything is more expensive here. It sucks, but yeah, and, and like we yeah. we talked about this before. Like for the people that are saying like, oh, Nintendo's charging eighty dollars for a box of cardboard, and they're it's like, well, ones. you're yeah, yeah, you're paying like sixty dollars for, for the game, and then you're paying the yeah. ten dollars for the cardboard. So, uh, and then there's the stickers and markers or whatever else comes with. I don't know, a crayon yeah. box. Yeah. Well, they also so. like the strings and the rubber bands and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Like, oh, yeah. there's, a, there's a lot that's going to be in there. Like yeah. you're going to have to like compartmentalize when you open the container. It's like when you go and yeah. buy like a figure and it's like fifty dollars or eighty dollars, and it's like, oh, that's eighty dollars for a piece of plastic. And it's like, well, it is plastic, but it's like right. Yeah. Yeah. So that's fun. kind of beside the point. But, but more like what I'm saying <laughs> is that like, like if Nintendo Nintendo can pretty much release anything, and, and uh, buy if it. they made a Nintendo toaster. If they made a Nin toaster and it was just a normal toaster, have you seen not, the, and it had the logo on it? I'd still buy it because it has the Nintendo logo. Have you like, seen the like, NES consoles? Like people, um, if you watch Cinemassacre or the Angry oh, Video I Game Nerd, that. he has the toaster, it's an actual toaster, and, and you and put it's the a NES. Yeah, have you seen that? Yeah, That's actually, cool. misclick. Oh, no. Yeah, it's like not. a custom built toaster. You put the cartridge in and you pull the thing down and it puts the cartridge in like toast. But I'm it's an NES that's built into a toaster's case. I'm so. imagining kids like seeing that, oh. trying to do that at home, and they like ruin Wait, their oh. dad's oh. cartridges. No. Yeah, it's so on. Don't, um, don't try this at home. You have to look up like <laughs> probably any of the NES games reviews that's on 
um, the angry video game nerds. It's not on every video. Mm -hmm. just... I'm going to look it up later. All right. I'm actually so, interested in this. This is, uh, yeah, like this, <laughs> this kind of just brings me to the really quickly before we move on to the next news story. Do you think there is a place for this game on the Nintendo Switch? Because if we look at the yes. PlayStation... Yes. All right. So if we look at the PlayStation 4, which this game was the exclusive for for a while, um, apparently it looks like it was a timed exclusive, similar to when Rise of the Tomb Raider released on the Xbox One. It was mm -hmm. only on the Xbox One. A year later, they released the PC, PS4 version. This seems mm -hmm. to be like maybe Sony funded or halfway funded this game. That way they right. could have the timed exclusive for it. But um, like, if you look at in the world of platformers, we have Super Mario Odyssey, we have the ukulele, we have all of these, well not all of these because I guess there's not a lot, but there's really great platformers. There's 2D platformers, mm -hmm. there's retro inspired platformers, there are the new amazing 3D platformers like Mario mm -hmm. Odyssey. Uh, this game, it is a 3D platformer, mm -hmm. but the way that the camera angle is, it's like you're on a trail running. Yep. You're, it's not like you can't run off and go in any direction right. you want. So do you think there is, alongside Ukulele and Mario, do you think there's a place for this game to exist to where people would be interested? Or do you think people would be expecting to like go in any directions like i guess spyro would be an example mm -hmm. of like mm -hmm. the I early think, playstation Crash, platformers like, its game design conveys well enough like how the mechanics work and what the level design is like as soon as you go into it you're not going to be like well why can't i go over there like you see that there's the path is very limited and the, it, it's very clear in its game design what to expect from it but i think just crashes art style and the sort of wacky yeah. Uh, style of his character. I think he fits right in with Nintendo's and roster. This was yeah. a May I say something? Yeah, sorry, yeah. Ashley. What were you going to say? Ashley, just um, talk over Jesse. That's what I do. <laughs> <time. Yeah. laughs> Being rude. Um, well, look at Samus Returns. Like, that was a 2D kind of platformer, right? And I think it's still sold well, even though that it's going against, like, you know, Mario Odyssey and the Switch. You know, on the 3DS. I mean, Samus Returns shows that people are still interested in platformers, like even up against games like Horizon Zero Dawn or Call of Duty. I don't know what the subtitle is. <laughs> and I think that Crash Bandicoot does have a place on the Switch. It'll look different than Mario Odyssey and Breath of the Wild and Splatoon 2, but I mm -hmm. think that Variety is important. I think that having more difference will help the Switch in its longevity. Yeah. Right. And but uh, I don't know if Samus Returns is the... But like, there are examples of that. I don't know if Samus Returns is the best it. example. Yeah. Oh, because it's, it's very much a return to form of, like... Yeah. It was just what, the one that I came to mind. Yeah, yeah. No, But there are other examples that, yeah, do show, like, there, the, the platforming genre is not as dead as maybe some thought. Um, mm. Yeah. I think it's I think it's really cool because uh, before I actually my first console ever was a GameCube, but my friends around me all had one had Nintendo 64, the other had a PlayStation, and my other friend had a PlayStation 2. Um, so I, I like I loved playing Donkey Kong Country. Oh yeah, Hi, Jesse. Donkey Kong Country <laughs> was absolutely amazing. I, I loved it. You know, being a uh, it, it was it was it's it's Donkey Kong. I mean, you can't go wrong with it. I also loved Spyro. So if you know we, we get spiral here in the future, I'd be very happy with that. But yes, uh, where is mine the back there still? Yeah, I have my silver one um, that one of my friends gave me more recently. But my my actual my original was purple. But um, gosh, I'm so underrated. <laughs> Love that console. Oh, I had a but, purple GameCube too. Yeah, that I was the, the way to go. Yeah, that one and the platinum one. My sister is a black one. Oh. But um, no, like to see these two come together, like Crash Bandicoot, uh, I was very into at my, my friend Ricky's house, and he also had Crash Bandicoot Team Racing. And so both of those games were just so much fun, and kids had so much fun with them too, and then people growing up with them as well. So I think it's kind of cool to bring, for me personally, the two worlds together, because like I said, like it was something I had just grown up on, but like you said, he's very, he's an exuberant character, he's very, you know, just 
silly and wacky and kind of crazy, and the, the characters, like, it's a very, it's a lighthearted game. So I think it's going to do very well, well on Nintendo. I don't think you have to worry about it, but um, I'm kind of glad that they're bringing it on and they're kind of, like, breaking down mm-hmm. the barriers because I would just love it if we didn't have console wars, if we didn't have <laughs> this is better than that or, you know... It's just Sony always wins, as you know, Ultra likes to say. But me too, girl. Me too. I just, it just, yeah. I, I'm glad that this is like a step in the right direction, you know, because like it's mm-hmm. like why everyone why? wins. Yeah. And you know, yeah. let's keep in mind as well, if we can have Sonic on an on, uh, like he's pretty much a Nintendo mainstay now. Like there's mm-hmm. no like if people people see Sonic games come out on Nintendo and they don't think twice of it, but w- ba- back in the day, you know, back, back in my day, <laughs> Sonic and Mario were, you know, that that was unheard of when, like, Sonic Adventure, like, came out on Nintendo. Like, that was insane. Like, that was a huge, huge thing, and because people were like, but that Sega exclusive, Sega and Nintendo are rivals, Sonic and Mario, are, like, this is a, impossible, but it happened, it worked well. It's probably the only reason Sonic, you know, so, like, Sega going third party is the only thing that kept them afloat. The sad um, thing is the games that Sonic is in. No, like the the <laughs> yeah the games that Sonic and Mario are both in are the Sonic games that have sold the most. Which is sad. <laughs> yeah, it's just incredibly sad. Yeah. Sonic Mania that was like originally created by a fan did better than yeah first. yeah yeah. Like uh, kind of so, funny, but, like Mario and but I do like that approach that Sega just was like these fans are making Sonic games they're doing really good let's give them a job at Sega and they can work on the next Sonic game and then yeah. they came up with Sonic Mania and it was awesome yeah and then you see things like AM2R get shut down by Nintendo and I'm like oh well <laughs> you guys like there's an opportunity bring here bring them in like bring just them yeah in. like these are these are the the developers of tomorrow right and these are very passionate developers like this guy spent a decade on this. Um, mm-hmm. Or yeah, you see, so. you see people uh, like uh, my buddy Cry, Cry X, who does the Unreal Engine. Oh, with, with uh, you know that guy. Oh, dude, he's in my streams all the time. Such a sweetheart. Him and Many he's are great. like two of the coolest people. But just like mm-hmm. people, people that have this capability, and you know, they're talking about wanting to bring in new developers, talking about wanting to bring people into leadership and kind of develop mm-hmm. the future of Nintendo. While I think they should keep their charm and their magic of being different and always being innovative. They would really develop well and, and, and like, I kind of ensure their future by bringing in people who are tech savvy and bringing in people who really know kind of where the up and coming, you know, flow is going, you know, with games. Mm-hmm. Like, if you want to show the potential of it, we've had people that are pretty much proving that on the outside. We all saw, like, the demo of Twilight Princess, you know, yeah. we all thought it was, it was going to happen and then it never did. So it's like, well, you're showing us what it could do. Mm-hmm. Like, are you gonna Mm -hmm. capitalize on that and when you see other people doing it you know it's kind of like don't be like a you know don't be sega don't you know shut those people down you know completely like bring them into your team like it would be so cool to see that so yeah yeah Uh, well and you even see with the younger generation of developers you know the whole reason things like splatoon and arms happened and a lot of the design behind breath of the wild was as well like people Mm -hmm. who weren't on the zelda team coming in and working on it yeah, and, like Monolith uh, Soft worked, mm-hmm. I think, on Zelda. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, so so my my original point though was that you know if uh, if we can have Sonic on Nintendo, then why not have Crash? Because um, it's good to sort of it's good to mix up your roster of uh, of mm-hmm. ni- what's considered Nintendo characters, right? Yeah, everyone yeah. needs love. Oh my gosh! If Mario, Sonic, and Crash were in a game together. I would like cry. Everyone oh would goodness. explode. <laughs> I feel like. Oh. Okay. I can see the the old commercials being mashed up on YouTube now. You've seen them in their own games. <laughs> now, 2023 coming. No more exclusives yeah. coming to all consoles and Steam. And, and like Steam. Avengers shots. Cross Avengers your fingers shots. for Smash mm. Brothers. Oh, gosh. oh yeah, you... Crash Bandicoot could get into you... the next oh. match. Do you he would think really fit in Smash. Yes. Do you think it's going to be a new game, or do you think it's going to be a port? I think it, there's been enough time passed to where they could have made a new game. I, I said this the, on the last podcast we were talking about it. The reason that a lot of people think Smash Brothers for the Wii U took so long to come out was because 
in the same Nintendo Direct that they announced, hey, we're going to work on Smash Brothers, they also announced we're going to be working on Kid Icarus, and it was the same team. And he said sure. that as soon as they finished Kid Icarus Uprising or whatever it was called for the mm -hmm. 3DS, yeah. they were going yes. to begin working on Smash Brothers. Which is why there's a lot of Kid Icarus references in Smash 4. It wasn't just <laughs> because Masahiro Sakurai did both games. It was the same team working on the two games. Yeah, right. so we don't know exactly when uh, Kid Icarus finished development, and we don't know like if they took a week of a break, if they took like a month or however long. <laughs> and then whenever they worked on Smash Brothers, they worked on the Wii U version and the 3DS version alongside each other, one being far more powerful than the other. So you basically had to make two different versions of the same game that both work together. Like you can use the 3DS mm. to play Smash Brothers As on the Wii. As a controller, right? Yeah. 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 So they had to make two completely opposite versions that actually worked together, mm. similar to what we've seen, I guess, with Hyrule Warriors. But they had to make that. Um, but with the Switch, they only have to focus on one version, and it's going to be people that are familiar with already making Smash Brothers. So I think there's been enough time passed that it could be Smash 5 or whatever. Um, mm. So, yeah, like, personally, I think if it would have come out sometime this year, earlier, whenever the Switch, like, during the launch window, a port would have made sense. But now there's been enough time that's like, if we get a port, then it really will just seem kind of lazy because enough time, yep. again, like, enough time's passed to where we could have gotten a new one uh, but really quickly going around everyone's thoughts on possible Crash Bandicoot on Switch um, another thing to add in yes. is Crash Bandicoot is a $40 game I believe the Insane Trilogy it wasn't full priced oh, okay so okay. Uh, yeah I think they did something right. similar with uh, the Ratchet and Clank remake they released it at mm -hmm. $40 it was a, a big remake as well so yeah. Going around, everyone, yes, no, or would you buy it? Uh, yes. Uh, yes. Yes. And I would buy it. All right. Well, Ashley, mm -hmm. oh. Kingdom Hearts, take us, oh. take us through take us this away. new story. Okay. So, um, 